I am going to take a moment of my day to speak to the married couple, such as myself. I'm married. There is something that happens in marriage. It says that the two shall become one flesh. That means a man and a woman are to come together and they are to come together to operate as a unit. Now, that's very, 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 very um, weird to fathom in your mind operating as one body. But I want to share something that the Lord gave me concerning marriage. You have a male. You have a female. You have two people. And they are coming together to create one flesh. In order for this to happen, that means that somebody has to die. Both of you have to die. It's something called a ripping process. That means that when you take one body and you take another body, in order to put them together, something has to form and something has to rip. And this is called a ripping process. And doing this process, it causes you to do what First Peter um, 3 and 7 said. The Bible says that husbands dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Now, what does this mean? Do you know how serious that is? The mandate for the husband or the man in the household is so strong that that two individuals to create one flesh, the ripping happens with the male. That means that your husband has to do what the Bible said. It says, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and lay down his life for it. That means that he died. He sacrificed. And so what the husband has to do is he has to sacrifice his old ways. He has to stop being a bachelor and stop running the streets and um, come out the strip clubs and stop being selfish and, and realize that before he eats that the family has to eat. But the wife has to become so submissive until she understands that he is the head of the household, that anybody gets the big piece of chicken. It's the husband. And so the submission has to take place. There is nothing more beautiful than to submit to a man that you know that will sacrifice for you. And so when the ripping process is happening over the course of time and marriages, it creates, as the Bible stated in Genesis, enmity between man and woman. That means that the fighting begun. And so the disgruntledness comes in and then you don't know your place. And enmity means a fight. And so in this process of the husband and the wife ripping to create one flesh with enmity between you got to do what first Peter three says, it said, dwell with your wife according to knowledge so that your prayers be not hindered. People always talk about unforgiving. This will hinder your prayers. Yes, it will. But did you know not treating your spouse right will hinder your prayer? It will. Somebody just got a revelatory moment and that's okay. When you have a wife, the Bible says to dwell with her according to knowledge. What does that mean? That means that when you are yielding yourself as a humility part as a man to understand your wife, you're getting knowledge to dwell with her. That means, you know, on a certain type of the month, I ain't messing with that woman. That means that when you understand things that she likes, her dislikes, things that um, make her tick, things that you just may not um, get, you learn it. And how do you do that? That means that she's got to take her time to give you what she needs so that you can dwell with her according to how you know her. Now, people say, well, how do you give us this advice and you've been married? No, because I am not just educated. I'm a wife and I understand the biblical context in which my marriage is founded. And so as my husband, I have to give Calvin everything that he needs to dwell with me according to knowledge. That means on Mother's Day and Father's Day and, and holidays, and he knows my likes and my dislikes. If I tell him that I love, 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 love stilettos, and he consistently buys me flip-flop, that means that he's not dwelling with me according to the knowledge that I gave him. And a lot of men get so confused in their marriage and they like, I don't know what she wants. She just want to fight. She just want to argue. I don't care what she, do you have the knowledge to dwell with your wife according to knowledge? Wives, did you give your husband what he needs to dwell with you so that you won't become the woman that the Bible says it is better to dwell in a rooftop or the wilderness than to be in a household with a woman that's going to just be brutally and, 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 and violent. Did you give her the knowledge that she needs to dwell with you according to knowledge? And so to dwell with your wife according to knowledge is the weaker vessel. That means she's not as strong as you think she is. 
because you have been given the opportunity to cover her. That means how do you cover this woman without knowing who she is? How do you cover her and not know her likes and her dislikes? How do you cover her if you have no idea her mindset? Women change. I love Sting. He's one of my favorite um, artists. And he, I read his book and he said with his wife, what they do is over the course of time when he's on tour, their bodies change so much. They make love for eight hours. And he said they burn candles and they get in the middle of the bed and they, they, they just touch each other. And he said the reason why they do this is because over the course of time, her body has changed. Oh, there's a new wrinkle there. That's a mole. And he sees that. Over the course of her aging, her body is now changing. And so he's got to get communicating with her going. To, they have to converse with each other because even her likes and her, her dislikes have changed. So in order to dwell with his wife, according to knowledge, he takes some time and he just communes with her. He speaks with her. He touches her hair. He notices that every gray hair in her head has changed. It's different. And so when you dwell with your wife, according to knowledge, that means that you're getting to know her. So many of us get in marriage and we don't even take the time to get to know each other. The dating process is absolutely nothing. That actually is easy because it's very easy to send a representative, but the person that you want is locked up in the cage back home and he or she doesn't surface to years down the line. And so if you're making a covenant with this person, you have to realize that not only are you dwelling with them according to knowledge, you're absolutely learning the person that's locked in a cage. Can you accept that person? What brings that person out of that cage? And I can almost assure you that if you don't have the knowledge to dwell with your wife, according to knowledge, that's exactly who's always out of the cage because you don't even know how to stick her back in it. And so you have to understand that husbands, when you... Don't dwell with your wives according to knowledge and you don't know her. She does become angry. She does become, even in some cases, unfortunately, um, she sustains herself from even being intimate with you. And so I'm not putting all of the blame on you. I'm saying that when you don't have knowledge to dwell with your spouse according to the way the word of God says with knowledge, you are walking around with a time bomb in your house. And so when you begin to pray for her, you know what happens? The Bible said that your prayers are hindered because you don't even know what to pray for because you haven't taken the time to even know what it is that's bothering her. And so dwelling with your wife according to knowledge so that your prayers may not be, be not hindered means, baby, can you give me the information I need to allow us to operate in one flesh? Is it because I'm staying out entirely too much at night? Is it because I'm not doing the things that I have to do to make this household better and to allow you to submit to me as a weaker vessel? What am I not doing? And so once you get that, you'll be surprised the light bulb that'll go off in your mind because you think that you've got it figured out, but you don't. I told someone recently named 10 things that's going to allow you and your spouse to dwell with each other better. That means you, the wife, List 10 things. Husband, you list 10 things. And you guys sit down and you switch. And if you realize that on that list, those 10 things is something that you definitely didn't know about or that you might have overlooked, do yourself a favor and adhere to that list and do everything that your spouse wants you to do. And you may see a change in your household simply by taking time to get a little knowledge about who he or she is. And then guess what? You could take it from there. Sometimes we think over the course of time that we have actually did our best and we have tried. No, you have not exhausted all your possibilities before you walk out, get a divorce, or God forbid, take up with another relationship. In order for two flesh to become one, that ripping process takes time, effort, love, sacrifice, attention. And it even takes time for you to do something drastic and dwell with each other. And never mind being involved with family members, but sometimes communing with yourself so that you both can get it. I remember one time I was watching television and I'm going to hurry up and let you go. And the Lord told me to watch Wife Swap and it was a marathon. And I'm like, okay, you mean to tell me I got to watch it all. But he said, I'm trying to help you understand the two becoming one flesh. How do you take a woman who is so... Um, she, this woman, I watched an episode and she was really a princess. She began to have everything that she wants 
and her husband gave her everything that she wanted. But they switched her and they put her with a man that doesn't believe in that. That his wife has to work. She has to till the land. They can't use electricity. But she has to brush her teeth with clay. Because it saves money. And so they took both wives and they switched them. And the woman that was so used to the accoutrements of life. She said how do you live like this? This is crazy. But the other woman said. My husband doesn't allow me to watch television. This is nice. And so for the other woman that was living almost poverty, her light bulb went off and said, whoa, hold on, something ain't right. But the other woman that was treated well said, okay, this ain't right, but she does cook for her husband. I could take, take that lesson. So they begin to take lessons to each other. So I said, God, I get it. So, okay, there's a balance. He said, no, watch closely. How do you take a woman that at one point in her life watched television and at one point in her life used toothpaste? But got with a man that totally shifted the way she thought and said, this is the way we're going to do things. She was a weaker vessel. But she dwelled with her husband because something happened. That means his personality, his character and spirit was so strong until even her being the weaker vessel. She just not only submitted, she yielded to his ways and to his custom, and even to a level of his brutality, simply because she wanted peace. And he was so selfish, and he didn't even realize that there was a requirement that she needed until this woman that at one point was happy, became she became docile, and she became just so weak and depressed because her husband didn't even care about what she wanted. And so the ripping process became where she took her husband who believed in living on the land and the ways that she grew up as a child and he became so strong, he overpowered her and the two became an unhealthy flesh. An unhealthy flesh. And so why do you think you have those personalities like Bonnie and Clyde? Because Bonnie and Clyde took two personalities and that strong individual, which was the husband and that weaker vessel, he overpowered her and she submitted and said, okay, let's go rob a bank. That's why you have women that'll do anything a man tells her to do. Why do you think women who get into certain situation in abuse, they don't even know how to get out because they're not thinking because they are the weaker vessel and this strong personality dwelled with her and he basically overpowered her and, and in a ripping process, he gravitated onto her and two of them became one flesh and it became an unhealthy flesh. If you don't love yourself, women, and understand what you want, you, if you're not careful, will get involved with a man who is not only the strong man, but he will be a stronghold and gravitate you as a weaker vessel and don't care how to dwell with you according to knowledge. And he don't care what you want. And if he's selfish enough, he will overpower you as a weaker vessel. And guess what? You do anything that that man tells you to do and you will be in an unhealthy situation. However, if there is a healthy balance and she knows what she wants and she knows what she needs. And she takes her desires and she gives it to her husband and he dwells with her according to knowledge and he respects her and he understands that me getting the knowledge that she's giving me is going to allow me to cover her in prayer and fasting and doing what I need as a husband and wife and honor her and love her as Christ loves the church. He'll begin to come in and instead of overpowering her, he will dwell with her according to knowledge and they will become one flesh. And they will operate because the most beautiful thing that you could do in a marriage, wives, is submit to a man that you know that will lay down his life for you and a man that will dwell with you according to what you need. And then when he prays for you, those prayers will go right to the throne of grace. Marriage is work. It is. It is work. And guess what? It's a job that doesn't quit. Even if you have children, do you know that job doesn't quit because you get divorced? If you're thinking about marriage, if you want to get married, if you're in a marriage, understand what it is. It is a sacrifice and it is a job that requires an ongoing fight. But it gets easy when you wives give your husband knowledge to who you are, what you need. And husbands don't assume and don't be selfish. But the Bible said, dwell with her according to knowledge. And every time you pray, he'll hear you. Think about it. It's in 1 Peter 3, 7. Read it yourself.